You ready? Oh man. Alright, let's see what happens. If you didn't see it, I've made two really, really bad life decisions in the videos before on the Krusty Lobster Boat video. This is Really Bad Decisions Part 3, installing a really awesome Cummins engine into my new Krusty Lobster Boat. Oh, wait a second, how did we get to this engine starting? Well, we had to remove the old one. And if you want to see me take out this engine, this is in video part 2, link below. Before we put this new engine in, I've got to clean these engine mounts out. Now I can do my favorite thing in the world. Collect the 40 year old bilge sauce. I gotta pressure wash the inside of this, get it nice and clean. The engine room also needs to be expanded, so I'm gonna cut this fiberglass and balsa core and expand the engine bay to hold this new engine. This new engine is actually a little bit narrower below, but it's fatter on the top, so some modifications need to be happening. A little bit of the wood is rotted out on the inside, so we're gonna replace it with new Douglas fir. This is the Cummins QSB 5.9. I got the 380 horsepower version. I spent about $26,000 on this motor. I can't believe I paid for this. A lot more than I thought I would ever be spending on a boat motor. However, Maronite stuff is extremely expensive and I want the best quality, so I bought a used secondhand motor. This motor is a 2007 engine with 400 hours on it and that is exactly what you will get if you spend this kind of money. Why did I do this? Oh, did I also mention that this transmission for this boat is very expensive? This was also about $9,000. Yeah, boats are really, really expensive, and I kind of really regret all this so far, but I think I'm going to have a really sweet boat by the time this is done. All right, Sam, let's see what you've done here. Ooh, oh, that fits great. Look at that. It's like he's an expert machinist or something. Well, moving on with my poor life decisions, it's time to put this motor in the boat. We've made some new aluminum brackets, but first we're going to lower the engine down, get a look on things, take some measurements, Pull the engine back up, drill the brackets and install them, hammer them in. These are just some big overkill pieces of aluminum, angle iron, that should be definitely suited for this job. Oh hey, how's it going? You may be wondering how I got here. Well, it turns out I don't want to pay a professional to do this. So currently there's a 1,500 pound engine hanging above my head, suspended by two 4x4s, and I do not have health insurance currently. So how's your date going? <laughs> All right, Sam, you definitely are a jack of all trades. Let's see how this thing works out. It so, should be close. We got the PVC, we got the end of the chair. Oh my God, look at, look at that. It's like with, really within the ballpark. For a bunch of amateurs wrestling around with a giant engine and a boat, never building boats, this turned out really good. That's a huge weight off my shoulder. Man, there is definitely not a user guide for this kind of crap. Now, the really cool thing about 3D printing is you can make all sorts of things. We got this special gadget. If you haven't figured it out yet, this is a laser jig. I've seen people align these motors and perhaps really tricky about this style of boat is the engine is actually aligned to the drive shaft. The drive shaft is built into the boat and then the engine is aligned to that. So this is going to go in the back of the transmission. If this laser comes straight out the back side of the engine, the boat hole in the back is dead center. So I'm going to take some measurements and we're going to use this laser beam to get this thing as straight as possible so we can get the engine going in because there's no U-joints or anything flexible in this drive line situation. It's literally a shaft, a coupler, and the engine. You have to get it like perfect. With these little screw holes I designed, I can adjust windage and elevation and get this thing perfectly bore set. It's actually a bore site for a gun, so that worked out fantastically. Oh, it's getting so close. Look, it's like over there on the ground. I, I need to tweak this a little bit more. We're getting so close to this. Fantastic. Now for total amateurs, I've just been reading around the internet and apparently we're supposed to get this engine within about three hundredths of an inch, but I misread that and I thought it was three thousandths of an inch. So with feeler gauges, we got it extremely close and the expert came out and he freaked out because uh, it was a lot closer than most people typically get. So I guess that makes me feel pretty good. Although credit is due where credit is due. Sam is the one who really could figure this thing out. So without Sam, this probably would have been a lot worse. So anyways, that engine lineman is spot on. Saved me a lot of money and time because boat people are not cheap to hire for anything. If there's one thing I'm learning about this boat is that I bit off more than I can chew. And it is also requiring me to learn a bunch of things or perhaps pick up new skills that I need to learn. 
which is why I'm happy that Skillshare is sponsoring this video. Skillshare is a massive online community filled with thousands of experts passionate on all sorts of subjects and things that you want to learn about. The neat thing about this boat is I'm also learning a ton of new skills to make this boat happen, such as the laser guided 3D printed jig. And if you want to learn how to make this and things just like it at home, Skillshare has a complete courses on Fusion 360, the software that I use to design this part. Now, the very neat thing about the way Skillshare works is that if you're looking for a specific part of information, it's right on the sidebar highlighted for you so you don't have to waste your time scrubbing through a video trying to find that sweet spot. It's all right there just for you so you can learn as fast as possible and also go back and look for any bit of information that you might have been missing. It's the year 2024. The boat's still not in the water, but my skills are definitely improving. If you want to improve your skills at home for this New Year's and elevate your skills, hobbies, or career, definitely check out Skillshare using the link down in the description below. The first 500 people that click the link down in the description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Now it's on to fixing more of the drive stuff with the boat. This damage to this through hole where the shaft goes for the drive line. I'm gonna actually use this as some sort of mold. So just kind of put some epoxy back there, put this plate on and tighten it and pull the plate off. A few hours later and dang, look at that. And we're back. So I got the shaft today. Built this crazy rig right here to kind of hold that. Lucky for me, I found a secondhand shaft from some awesome guys up in North Rhode Island. Is that Massachusetts? I think it's Massachusetts. That's where I got this shaft. Anyways, we're gonna put this in the boat. It's a solid piece of stainless steel, better than the old Tolbin bronze shaft I had. So I'm very confident in this stuff. We also had to upgrade the shaft size. The old shaft that was in this boat was a one and three quarter inch shaft. This is now a two inch piece of stainless steel. And we'll put this ramrod in and tighten it up. It's time for the magic. Will it fit? Did we do all of this for nothing? And that is how you do the drive line in the boat. Watch your head. You got it free? Yeah, it's Hey, that's a cool shirt you got there. I wonder where I got that from. That was pizza. <laughs> Timber. All right, I could finally get some of this crap off, get a good look at this boat. So in between working on the engine and all that other crazy stuff, I also wanted to remodel the rest of the boat. So obviously we finished cutting out the windows and reinstalling them. If you want to see what it used to look like, check out the first video before we really cut this thing up. The old windows were leaky too, so they kind of needed to be fixed. Well, I went for the overfix thing and literally just redid the entire pilot house to look different. Now we're going to increase this combing on the back side, the combing roof overhang. I don't really know what it's called, but anyway, so we're going to extend it because I want a place to get away from the weather. And I think it looks a lot neater. For a lot of this stuff, we're going to use total boat fairing. I didn't realize this, but total boat make this really cool two part epoxy putty that you mix together and it literally turns this green color and you can smear it everywhere and fill it, your boat out or whatever you're working on. It's making this a whole lot easier because I really thought I had a fiberglass this whole thing, build up layers of fiberglass, sand it all down and try to put resin on it when you can really just fill it. In addition to fiberglassing, of course. So we're getting really itchy. My dad also came out and helped finish up the roof because uh, this thing is, this is a serious project and uh, it's getting into the month of uh, September now. I learned this really neat trick from another YouTuber who builds boats. You lay out some cardboard down and you trace it to your part and then you take that cardboard and put on your new template. It's like a really fast way to make templates and it is dead on accurate. Whoever came up with that cardboard or stick trick from framing up stuff that you just don't want to measure, that turned out awesome. Look how tight those gaps are. No mussing, no fussing with measuring and whatever. Just cut it to fit and then you got yourself whatever panel you're working on. One more thing I got to work on is the mast on this boat. I don't think I want to buy a mast and I kind of want to build my own. So we're going to get some 6061 pieces of aluminum. Now I don't have a welder cable of welding this up. So I just paid someone to weld it, but now it's time to paint it. All right, now time for the masterful centerpiece crown. I don't know what you call it. Let's put this thing on the roof. This thing will definitely hold my searchlight and will also hold the radar and some other fun LEDs and doodads and look cool on top of the boat. No boats complete without one. So this boat is definitely changing a lot. It used to look like this on the roof and now it looks like this. Definitely kind of improving it in my opinion. For this boat, there are a bunch of through hole fittings for picking up seawater and running auxiliary pumps and stuff like that. However, there were too many. Today was nothing but tons of grinding and sanding because we had to patch all of these through holes. There's five and we're going down to three. One for a washdown pump, one for the engine, and one hole for the transducer for figuring out how deep the water is. 
Wow, that's a lot of G10. That board over there, that was $800. Boat building is definitely not cheap. Rather than doing it the way they used to have it with some wood blocks, we're going to embed these giant pieces of G10 fiberglass, epoxy them down, fiberglass them in, and then fiberglass filled on other parts of the boat where I plan to plug the through holes. And now I'm giving the new through holes these huge backing blocks because I really want to make sure that none of these fittings tear out because if these tear out, you have a really big hole in your boat and it would sink very fast if you don't catch it. You know you're doing it the right way when you have a generator, a TIG welder, the TIG pedal and a ladder, and now you're about to do the jankiest weld you've ever done. And that would be my first stainless steel TIG weld. Laugh about it in the comments. What the heck is holding it up? Oh. Were you holding it? <laughs> These exhaust parts come from Seaboard Marine. They design and do all sorts of custom fabrication and things like that. If you got any sort of boat project you're working on that has a Cummins engine or if you need to get a ZF transmission, these guys are definitely the expert. They've helped me with a lot of my questions and I really appreciate them taking the time out to help someone kind of dumb like me figure this stuff out. All right. Time to install the heavy fuel filter. This is only a couple thousand freaking dollars. Raycor fuel filters installed. So I'm going to install the fuel filter because it's very important that I don't have contaminated diesel fuel going to my motor because I really want to make sure this motor is happy and healthy. It's important to do some preventative maintenance. So this is the engine after cooler. It cools the turbocharged air, mixes it through radiator with seawater. I want to make sure this thing doesn't corrode or have any leaks. So we're going to pressure test this real fast. And then once we're done with that, we're gonna lube it up with some metal lube so it's easy to take apart in the future and clean. And for the next step, we'll put oil in the motor. And then I think we're good to start this thing and see what happens. All right, the time has come. We are going to hook up all the electronics on the boat. If it blows up, I want it on Kent. Uh, let's see. So now this Cummins engine has a little ECU doohickey that needs constant 12 volt power. We're gonna plug that in right now. And now I gotta wire up some of the additional engine stuff. Fortunately for me, and this marinized version of this engine, a lot of things are really plug and play. And that's thanks to Seaboard Marine. They've actually designed a whole bunch of controls for my motor. Should be able to turn this on. Yeah, this comes on. So I think the engine's trying to prime itself right now. It's making this priming noise. I think it's it's a lift pump lifting the diesel from the fuel tanks to the fuel filter to the motor. And I think all we have to do is hit start. Turn it on. The voltage is moving. You ready? Oh man. All right, let's see what happens. Oh. Yeah, this thing fires right up. That's a huge relief off of my shoulders. When I did buy this engine, I did see it running, so I, I knew I was getting something that's working, but you gotta wonder that if you did it right. You know, after moving it all around, manhandling it for a while, it seems pretty happy and okay for now. So we can't run the engine for very long right now because I gotta finish the rest of this exhaust stuff up. And right now it's using the internal radiator fluid i'm not sure if that what what's that called because there's no radiator there's a heat exchanger give it some juice so you can't start it without an actual water system but you have to disconnect the water pump and all that stuff but you can't run it for very long i wouldn't keep it on much longer This thing sounds awesome, it starts, that's amazing. You're probably watching this video in January or maybe February, 
I said I was going to launch the boat last year, and well, let's just say I bit off a little bit more than I could chew. Now, I'm very happy because the boat has an engine in it, it's got the prop shaft and everything in there, and we're getting very close to putting it back in the water. There are still a bunch of cosmetical things I need to finish up. However, it is way too cold to work on the boat anymore, and quite frankly, I got to work on some other projects to afford this boat. It's extremely expensive. But winter's going to be here soon, so I have no choice but to winterize. I know there's water in here because it blew it out, but... I might as well put some of this crap in here to make sure it doesn't freeze or well, the water doesn't freeze and break parts of my engine that really shouldn't be broken. Look forward to part four coming really soon where the boat actually will go in the water. Probably coming this July. Make sure you check out part one and part two if you want to see more of the lobster boat and make sure you subscribe if you want to see part four because we're going to put this thing in the water and we're finally going to be able to do some research on the water. This boat is actually a support vessel for a bunch of projects. If I haven't really made this clear by now, is that this boat is literally going to be used as a vessel to allow me to get to places so I can fly airplanes or do things on the water. Submarine airplane, anyone? That one's coming soon. Just kind of hold it there. Just slowly go up a little bit and hold it.